Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to tell you why you might want to start traveling before you start a business or start traveling so that you can start a business while you're on the road, while you're traveling. You know, most people think that in order to be able to travel you have to make a lot of money. So they think in terms of, okay, they start their business, they get rich, they hit it big, and then they can start traveling. Like the travel is a reward, but I'm going to make the case that it's better to start traveling first, at least in some cases. And I know that sounds a little crazy. so. Hear me out, but uh, I'm going to tell you why I think it's a good idea, and I'll tell you some of the drawbacks. This is what I've been doing personally. I think it's a great strategy, but there are some things that are not so great about it, so I'll tell you about those as well. If you've been following me for any length of time, you probably know that I've been a digital nomad for a while now, for four years or so. I'm not sure exactly, I'm kind of losing count. But what that means, what being a digital nomad means is that I work from a computer and I travel. And I used to do freelance work and I had a remote job for a while. And most people who figure out this digital nomad life are the people that are working remote jobs like I was before. But I think that this lifestyle works really well if you are working on a business like I'm doing right now. And there are two big advantages to living this digital nomad life if you are starting a business. And the first of those is that everything is cheaper. If you live in an expensive country like the US where I come from, Coming to a place like Brazil, where I am now, everything is a lot cheaper. I mean, for example, here I can stay in a nice apartment for five or six hundred dollars a month. Right? Here's one of the drawbacks of living in Brazil is these loudspeaker vehicles all over the place trying to sell things. But it's a pretty small price to pay. Anyway, you can live in a nice apartment here for five hundred dollars a month. Right, that's unheard of in the US. In some cities, $500 a month will get you a storage unit. And here you can live in a nice apartment beside the beach for $500 a month. Or I can get a nice lunch for $2.50. Or I can buy a chilled coconut with a straw in it beside the beach for $1, right? Or I can get an acai for $1. This place is amazing. So think about, if you quit your job and start a business, it's gonna take some time before that business becomes profitable. And if you don't have a job, you're not making any income. You have to spend that time, instead of working for somebody else, you have to be working for, for yourself. And you're not gonna get an income at first, so so you have to live on savings for a while or you know if you want to if you want to be risky about it you have to live on debt for a while so think about how much farther that savings or that debt can take you if you're paying two dollars and fifty cents for lunch instead of like nine dollars for a burrito at Chipotle or if you're paying five hundred dollars a month for an apartment instead of fifteen hundred in the US, right? The, the main value of money is that money buys you time. And when you're just starting a business, time is your most important asset. So if you move to a place where your money goes three times as far, well, what that effectively means is you can buy yourself three times as much time. Whatever business you start is going to need time and probably a lot of it. And by the way, when I say start a business, I mean that kind of loosely. I mean, you know, a freelance gig uh, I'm considering as a business because I don't recommend that you start a business right away, as I said in this video. I don't think it's a good idea to go straight from normal job to full business right away. There is an intermediate step, which is to learn a high income skill and start a freelance business around that high income skill. So watch that video if you wanna learn how to do that. But whatever kind of business you wanna start, whether it's like a full business or it's just you freelancing, focusing on one particular skill, it really, really helps to reduce your cost of living and living in other countries can really help with that. Okay, the second reason while traveling, while you're starting your business, can help you be more likely to succeed, and by the way, I think that this is the more important reason, is because it puts you in a new environment. Almost all of us have been programmed since birth to be cogs in a machine. We work for somebody else, we have a job, we work for a paycheck, and anybody that tries to deviate that model, uh, everybody else tries to pull them back in. You know, I was watching a video by Jason Capital the other day, who's a marketing guy that I follow, and he was telling a story about a crab fisherman or a guy that, that passed by a crab fisherman and he had this bucket full of crabs that he had caught and he was looking into this bucket and there's you know all these crabs piled on top of each other and there was one crab that was that was trying to crawl out of the bucket like he was crawling over all the other crabs and he was just about to reach freedom and he, he told the fisherman he said hey one of your one of your crabs is about to escape 
And the fisherman said, oh, don't worry about it. Watch what happens. And so this crab is crawling all over all the other crabs. He's just about to escape. He's just at the top of the bucket. And then the other crabs grab his legs and pull him back into the bucket. And that's such a perfect metaphor for the environment that most of us are raised in because we're raised with this programming, with this belief that we have to work for somebody else. We have to get a paycheck. You know, we all have to be mediocre. And then if one of us decides to try to climb out of the bucket, try to do something new, everybody else in the bucket is going to try to drag you back in. And part of that is your environment, part of it is subconscious, your own mind, because you've been raised in this environment and this environment reminds you of the way that you've been raised. So if you can escape that, if you wanna change your life, escape your environment, find a new environment, and then you avoid all those psychological cues that are keeping you back to the person that you were before the person that you want to stop being, the person that you want to improve so that you can live a better life, you're going to escape from that and also you're going to escape from all the people that are going to try to pull you down because like it or not, if you try to attain something better in life than the people around you, uh, a lot of people are not going to like that. A lot of people are going to look at your attempt at success and they're going to feel bad about themselves because they're not trying. They're content with being mediocre and you're trying for something better. Well, that makes them look bad, doesn't it? And some people will be inspired, right? Which is awesome. And I love that. If I can inspire someone, that makes me feel so good about what I'm doing. But other people are lazy and they're jealous. And they see that you're trying to do something better and they will try to drag you back down. And by the way, most people don't do this consciously, right? This is like an unconscious process. And so they make little nasty comments that they're not even really trying to drag you down in most cases, I think. Some people will. Some people will consciously try to drag you down, but some people just, just make little comments to try to hurt your self-esteem, to try to make you doubt your chances of being successful. And if you are going to be successful in climbing out of the bucket, it takes a lot of willpower. It takes a lot of internal mental battle because you have these doubts yourself, right? You have the same programming as everybody else. You have that voice in your head that's going to tell you you're not worthy. You're going to fail. You can't do this. You should just sit down and shut up and work your stupid mediocre desk job. You're going to have those thoughts. And the last thing you want to do is have other people around you feeding those thoughts. The last thing you want is an environment that is feeding those thoughts because those thoughts are always going to be with you. So if you can break out of that environment, if you can get away from those psychological cues, if you can get away from those other crabs that are trying to pull you down, then you have a so much greater chance of success. And being a digital nomad, going somewhere unfamiliar is a great way to do that. Changing your surroundings, your life is different, your surroundings are different, your environment is different, so maybe you have a chance to be different. You have a chance to be better and to build a better life for yourself. And by the way, I'm not saying that you should abandon your family and your friends. I'm not saying that your family and friends are evil and unsupportive. I'm just saying that we all have the same programming and it's gonna be hard for people to accept including the people who are supportive. I mean, you tell your family, for example, that, that you're uh, starting a business and maybe they're excited for you. They say you're starting a business, that's awesome. I wish you the best of success. And they really mean it, right? They're being sincere. But then two weeks later, you haven't made any money and they ask you, oh, so have you made any money in your business? after two weeks or two months or six months, right? You know, this takes time, but people don't understand that. And you say, no, I haven't made any money. And they say, well, maybe this business thing isn't for you. Or maybe you got suckered into a scam. Or maybe you just don't have the talent for this kind of business. And even though these people are well-intentioned, they're trying to protect you, they're bringing you down. They're fighting on the enemy's side in this mental war that already exists inside you. So if you can get away from the negative influences, including the negative influences that are well-meaning, you're gonna be so much better off. And I don't mean that you don't ever talk to your friends and you don't ever talk to your family. I'm just saying, separate yourself for a while, you know, talk to them sometimes, but change your environment, go away for a while, and then come back once you've done what it is that you came to do. Once you have a business that's successful, that's profitable, because if you have the results, 
then nobody can bring you down. Nobody can doubt you anymore. You have the results to prove it. And the people who brought you down before, because they were trying to protect you, because they were well-intentioned, will be happy to see your success. And you won't have to try to convince them anymore. And then the people who were jealous, who were never your true friends to begin with, scurry away like rats from the light, and you'll be better off not having those people in your life anyway. Now, I recognize that getting up and moving to another country is not something that you just do, right? There's some planning, there's some process that you have to go through, and you have to learn some things to do it. And, you know, I had to learn all this through trial and error for the most part. I, I read some blogs and I read some books that helped, but mostly I had to figure out myself. And the fact that I had a remote job made it easier for me to figure out because, you know, I had a reliable income source while I was figuring this stuff out. So, so I actually created a course to teach you how to do this. I teach you every step of the way from how to make money online to what to do with all your possessions and your bills and everything that you have to worry about back home. How to organize that all so that you can live on the road. And then how to arrange visas because you need visas when you're traveling to other countries, especially for prolonged periods of time. How to find the best prices on plane tickets, how to find the best prices on accommodations, how to deal with credit cards, with bank accounts, with phone plans, etc. right? There's so much stuff that you have to learn. And uh, so I've learned this all kind of through experience over the years. So, so I put it all together in my course called Digital Nomad University. I'll put a link down in the description below. So you can check that out. If you're serious about doing this, I highly recommend that you learn all the ins and outs of it before you just go jump in. And I also want to tell you there are some disadvantages to living abroad which you might not expect until you actually get there so I want to make sure that you know in advance so you know if it's for you because obviously this isn't for everybody one is the language if you go to a country with a different language than you're used to speaking uh, a lot of the world speaks English but not everybody so if you speak English and you don't speak any the language of the place that you're going, then it may cause you some trouble sometimes. I found that you don't really need to learn very much of a language to be able to get around. Basically, you need to say, hello, thank you, where's the bathroom, and I'd know, know the various names for food on the menu, which actually you can just Google Translate that anyway. So it's, it's really not as big of an issue as, as most people think it is, but it is a little bit of an inconvenience and it's something that you should learn at least a little bit. The second point is the internet. In the United States, we are blessed with awesome internet compared to the rest of the world. So when you travel, you might not have as good internet. Um, I found that usually I can find decent, like good enough to work internet in most places, but it's not always super reliable. So that's something that you do want to research ahead of time because if you get stuck with a bad internet connection, uh, that makes starting a business really difficult, especially if you're doing an online business. And in some places you can get the best available internet that they have there, which is still not as good as the US internet, which for most people, probably isn't a problem. Um, the, the biggest challenge I have with that is uploading YouTube videos because these videos in high definition that I put up, they're, they're kind of big files and they take a while to upload. So if you're not uploading big videos, then probably uh, you're not gonna have any problem with that. But you know, sometimes they go down, sometimes you have downtime, it's kind of a pain. You, you know, time is your most valuable asset, so you wanna minimize the amount that you waste. Which leads me to my next point that you're gonna have to waste time doing some stuff that you wouldn't have to do back home. For example, if you're living in and out of Airbnbs, uh, chances are you're gonna have to do more moving from one place to the next, which is gonna take your time. You might also have to deal with visa issues, which in some places is a giant pain. Like in Brazil, you have to make three different appointments with three different offices, and they have people that are just like the DMV in the US. I mean, government workers are the same in all of the world, I think. So they will waste your time, they're super bureaucratic, and if you don't get everything, all of your documents, all your proof of income, your proof of address, and all that stuff, if you don't have it all perfectly arranged and ready for the visit, then uh, they'll deny you and we'll be happy about it. So, so sometimes the processes with the government are difficult and will waste your time, and you know, a lot of these places, the traffic is bad, which, you know, you're not commuting to an office anyway, so it doesn't matter too much, but you know, if you wanna travel, uh, throughout the city. A lot of times the traffic takes a lot longer than traffic would in the US. So, so there's these kind of little things here and there that just take little bites out of your time. So that's another drawback. Again, I think that it's totally worth it. I think the drawbacks are tiny compared to the advantages that you get from living the digital nomad lifestyle while you're starting a business. Now, if you're interested in traveling and making money on the road, another way that you can do it is to have an actual travel business. And I got a pretty cool idea for how you can do that. You can check that out in this video, which will tell you all about how to start a travel business where you get paid to travel. 
So check that out if that's something that interests you. And please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe, and share this video if you think it'd be helpful for somebody else.